Yeah, Carlo, um, when we see new data, do we have to ask uh, if that it can be reconciled with what we already understand about quantum mechanics, or do we have to come up with a new theory of everything? We are, we are in a peculiar situation in which uh, um, physics has been, uh, uh, other times the past, but rarely. rarely. Uh, usually, I think uh, physics has been in a different, diff different situation than ours. For instance, when I was a student at university, there were zillions of data say the strong interactions and nobody could make sense of them. Or there was very, very rough ways of making sense of them that worked very badly. Today, <clears throat> we are in a funny situation in which uh, this set of fundamental theories that uh, Eric showed on her, his cap without, without gravity, without cosmological constant. Um, there is no indication almost, I'll, I'll, I'll come to the almost in a moment, uh, that anything we measure escape those theories. So uh, one can ask, okay, so what founds this theories? Maybe some unification, why three, why those numbers and the constant, why, why the cosmological constant is small, why the three generation? So one can ask these questions, okay. Um, but we don't have a, a, what physicists, scientists usually have, which is data to explain. Uh, but we do have some. I agree with Sabine that G minus two is not very convincing. My bet on G minus two is exactly what Sabina is saying, namely that the theoretical, the, the, the experimental calculation seems reliable, the theoretical not at all. In fact, I have friends in QCD on the lattice that have arguments to say that the theoretical calculation, um, it's very complicated, uses indirect things, and uh, it, it probably um, uh, trusts itself too much, and uh, and uh, it might move toward the experiment. So I don't see it's, uh, it's very tempting. Especially since uh, um, for 40 years we have heard uh, experimentally say, oh, we see a deviation from the standard model. They've all come back. They've all uh, been reabsorbed. The standard model is extremely successful. So I would take our successful theory for what they are, successful theory. Like Einstein took uh, um, uh, Maxwell theory, an extremely successful theory on which to build more and address the open questions. And there are open questions. We don't know what dark matter is. This is an open question. It's real. These are the data which we don't understand. We have mm -hmm. 23 of dark matter, which means non-reliable. Um, but there is more. For instance, we have this beautiful picture of black holes in the sky, right? We all were amazed by this. We, the, the picture is actually the, 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 the plasma super hot that rotates the black, the black hole, which is matter spiraling and falling into the hole, right? We, we essentially, see the matter falling. Uh, half an hour after that, it goes inside. We know general relativity, so we know what happens inside the horizon. We know it goes to the center, and then we know nothing. We don't know what happened to all that matter. We have a hole with everything falling in, and we have no idea what happened going in. This is a perfectly well-posed physical question, because uh, most likely, I mean, those are big black holes, so stay there forever. It's very possible that there are small black holes produces, we don't know, we're not sure, producing the early universe, uh, and they might have ended up the life already. So that's physics to understand. There's stuff in the universe we don't understand. And we have tools to try to do theories about that, try to expand our theories about that. So I'm very much with Eric that we sort of wasted 40 years running uh, big theories like string supersymmetry that has uh, have uh, most likely failed. Um, and the problem was not to, to explore those theories. It's not a beautiful theory, extremely beautiful theory. They were worth exploring. The mistake was that everybody was doing that. There are a few courageous people uh, and others who were uh, trying other directions. I am pretty confident in loop quantum gravity. I'm just coming back from the big loop quantum gravity conference in Lyon. It was fantastic, the new result. New attempt. Do I know it's right? No, I don't. I, if I have to bet, I bet on this, of course. Uh, but there are, and I hope that the quantum gravity is going to tell us, for instance, more about the early universe, what might happen closer to the Big Bang or inside the black holes, and perhaps even for dark matter. These right. are the interesting open questions for me. Not right. consciousness. Let consciousness to the neuroscientists. Yeah. They're good. They're good enough. 
Yeah, although if you leave it to Stuart Hameroff, he'd sell you. He already has the answer. Um, last question uh, before we start to wrap up, and and just so appreciative, and I will give you all a proper send off in just a minute. Uh, this question is about again about uh, um, <clears throat> Sir Roger Penrose. This is about gravitational collapse of the wave function. Sabina talked about in terms of consciousness and perception. We're not talking about that now. Eric, and then Carlo and Sabina. Um, what do you? What is this notion of gravitational collapse? Does it perhaps provide any Illumination. First, maybe Eric, if you could explicate it a little bit based on your wonderful interview with, with Roger. Um, what, what is it and what are its promising and its drawbacks, features? Well, since I didn't have a book to promote, let me promote a, a theory. Um, I think that uh, maybe the most interesting model of how gravity is harmonized with the quantum without being quantized in the most direct fashion is that gravity is the engine of observation. And so my claim has been hmm. that um, if you imagine that space time, as we are told, is doomed, uh, my favorite candidate is to replace the four dimensions, one of time and three of space, with those uh, four dimensions together with those plus 10 additional dimensions of Einstein's theory uh, for his symmetric two tensor. And then what would happen is, is that you would have a 14 dimensional structure and every metric would be a bridge between that 14 dimensional world and the four dimensional world. And then what you would have is that every time you chose a metric that is gravity, you would pull back different data from a, something that looked like a multiverse. And you start to understand that the real problem, this is the thing I was hoping we were gonna get to, so I'm gonna squeeze it in here because I don't think we did. Is the big one and a half minutes. The big problem in this area is trying to go after every theory that you've never thought of as if it were something called hidden variables. And then you want to prove something, which is that no hidden variable theory can exist that blah, blah, blah. It's an attempt to knock out your competition uh, from the get go, which is that you're going to speak about all the theories that haven't been discovered. Now, if you think about locality, if you're listening, let's say, to a whole lot of love by Led Zeppelin and you're doing it on an old style record you may hear a skip where suddenly it jumps a track and you're, you're two minutes, you're two seconds rather in your future. Now that's a local operation on a phonograph because the phonograph is a two dimensional surface, but in time it's a non-local operation because your, your stylus skipped a, a track. Mm -hmm. um, the issues with locality, with unitarity, with uh, stability, all of these things that quantum uh, field theory has to take into account is that if you're not in the proper theory, you can't really evaluate them. So my, my personal belief is that gravity has to be harmonized, but not necessarily quantized, and that gravity may be the observer. And the way in which you avoid a Schrodinger's cat problem between you know, a superposition of two quantum planets, let's say, is, is that whatever gravity field you throw up always pulls back data from a different space to the four dimensional space that we, we perceive that is compatible with where the stylus landed on the record, where the record is the 14 dimensional object. Okay, great. Carla, I'm sorry, we only have 30 seconds. If you'd like to respond to anything you've heard today or the specific question from the listeners uh, about uh, Penrose's gravitational collapse of the wave function, 30 seconds, please. I'm sorry. I feel like, you know, Einstein had a couple of two or three wrong papers. And I feel like if you keep asking me about the two or three wrong paper by Einstein, I mean, look at the fantastic things Roger Penrose did. It's marvelous. Look at spin network, look at tiling, look at quasi crystal, look at gravitational collapse, look at the um, Twister. uh, 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 twisters. <laughs> I, just, I can't even remember that. It's a marvelous amount of science that Penrose does. Why looking at the only two that don't make sense? Okay. <laughs>